Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having an incredible day. I know the video is late. Yeah, I, I know the internet stopped working today. I'm not joking. We didn't have internet, so I had to find some, and I found it. Likes, comments, and subscriptions are always very much appreciated. And without further ado, let's... You guys know where this is going. Let's jump right into it. First, the good news. The price of Bitcoin, it says, has increased by 14%. Yeah, as U.S. inflation declined. So uh, we had news late yesterday that apparently the inflation numbers finally were released. <clears throat> and inflation has fallen to an astronomically low level of 7.7% .7 within the United States, down from the 8% uh, from whence it came just a couple of days before. Uh, so remember when like cryptocurrency prices were completely like collapsing because of all the nonsense that's still going on. And then I was on Twitter and I made a joke and I was like, so do we do we moon now? Like, are we are we all going to go to brand new all time highs? Ha ha ha. Like an hour later, Bitcoin was up by 18 percent. I think Ethereum rose by 35 percent. All the coins began to skyrocket because, yeah, you guessed it. The stock market was doing the exact same thing. It says U.S. In, US inflation cools, sure, to lowest level since January. Year-on-year -year consumer prices rose by 7.7% in October, sparking massive rallies within stocks. It's actually, if you think about it, it's kind of beautiful, like how little we need to be happy anymore. We find out that inflation has lowered by 0.3%, and all prices just completely skyrocket, and even more so, I'm going to move on from this, but remember how I was like, hey, imagine how high prices would be if we didn't have this entire FTX news going on. We would probably be at like $25,000, $26,000 per Bitcoin, but that's besides the point. So yeah, inflation lowered, which means that the Fed's stuff is working. I can't believe it. It's not working at all. I'm sure it's actually something else, but they're going to be taking credit for it. So on that point, uh, prices began to rally. So, you know, we, we lost money but then we regained some of the money that we lost. So it's a lose-win-win situation. That's all the price news. Um, you, you think I'm joking, um, but the news was for some reason like focused on one other event. I can't, can't begin to imagine what might have happened. Yeah, get ready. Let's move on. It says FTX, United States. Announces it may halt trading on its platform in a few days. So the news currently is, and I'll, you know, here we go. It says in a long apology, the CEO of FTX, Sam Bankman Freed, popularly known as SBF, no one calls him that. It's just simply his name is far too long and no one wants to say all of it. Sam Bankman Freed, it's a lot. Assured the crypto community that the recent turn of events was only going to affect FTX International. According to him, FTX US, the US based exchange that accepts Americans, got it, was not financially impacted by the poop show. He assured users that FTX users was 100% liquid and that every user could fully withdraw modulo gas fees, etc. I don't know what that word is. Here's, a little, I guess, the, the other part of the tweet for it right here. So remember a couple of days ago when we got news that they were insolvent and I kept on saying if they were really insolvent that people wouldn't have been able to take their money out of the cryptocurrency exchange and then we got news that they were slowing down withdrawals but then a lot of other people who kept on saying that they were still able to take their money out of it and I was like, I'm pretty sure that they still have enough money. I guess it was only FTX International that was actually affected. What? Yeah, so the exchange apparently still has tons of money even though they are in debt and it appears as if now... Uh, people just within the U.S., I've even heard rumors of Bahamas, are able to take their money out. It appears that FTX International was the one that imploded, exploded, something ploded somewhere. I'm not really sure what happened. So this was also major news that people are still able to take their money out. Uh, but a lot of people, I think, are, I don't know. Not that they're trying to spin it into something else, but they say that they may be halting uh, trading on the platform or anything else in the next couple of days, which seems logical because I assume they really don't have a lot of money. I assume they have something. So, you know, thank your lucky something that you're able to take your money off of the exchange. 
You know what's really weird? Like mathematically, it's it's happening somewhere. Can you imagine being the person who's still depositing onto this exchange? You know, like there's always one person who's like, I'll give it a shot. I'll see if my money's safe here. If you have any money on this exchange or any other thing affiliated to it, take your money off immediately just so we don't have to deal with this ever, ever, ever. No, Liz, no, no. It's been like five times this year. I, 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 I really wonder... How many times people in the crypto industry need to be smacked in the face before they actually go, oh, I shouldn't be in crappy projects because it keeps happening. It says FTX users pull millions off of the exchange as limited withdrawals resume. So cool. I mean, at least it's not a dramatically insane fiasco because, you know, once again, historically before, we've had tons of situations where crypto exchanges have collapsed or disappeared that those those were those were the days remember like there wasn't even a hey you know guys we're going to be disappearing on all of you rug pulling in about three days take your money off they would just go they were gone these people made off with hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars so at least people can still take their money off that's the one dirty silver lining in all of this so yeah it's not surprising that people are trying to drain the website right now for as much of their money as they can if you know someone if it's you if you have a friend pause this video right now go tell them go tell yourself take your money off of that exchange because why why would you even think of i just don't understand why why that would even still be a conversation FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed has told investors the exchange needs money to avoid bankruptcy. Yeah, that's how it usually works. When you when you realize you don't got no money, you ask other people for it. The CEO of Cash Strapped FTX Crypto Exchange is reportedly warning investors that the company will collapse if it fails to get additional capital, citing a person familiar with the matter. His name is Trust Me Bro. Bloomberg reports that FTX CEO Sam Bankman Freed informed investors that his embattled firm may file for bankruptcy if it does not get the money needed to cover up to $8 billion in debt. There are a couple of people who came forward in the cryptocurrency space, a lot of like big wigs. They're not going to do it. These people don't even have enough money. They maybe have like a couple million dollars to their name, but they're trying to act all big saying that they'll be able to like actually cash them out. Uh, Justin Sun has came forward, the guy who created Tron. He does this every single time. He's popped up from his cave once again to talk about how he has enough money to be able to get them out of the hole or to make sure that he can acquire it and i don't know what the stipulation is going to be but if he does buy it or finds other people to also buy it with them it's not going to work don't forget about BitTorrent. don't forget he also bought poloniex don't forget the other crypto exchange that he also tried to purchase before everything he touches turns to garbage i'm tired of trying to be nice to people in the cryptocurrency exchange and even that barely i i, I you know I just simply tell you exactly what's going on, but one of the major news stories, and also Tron pumped as well, because a lot of people were like, oh yeah, Tron's going to go to the moon because Justin Sun says he's going to do something that he's probably not going to end up doing, and even if he does end up doing it, it's going to turn to crap, because every other single project that he's ever touched or created has immensely failed. So, Sam Bankman-Fried is now asking people for money. If anyone gives him money, they're idiots. Why would you, like, it's abundant, no, like, there's no, stop it. If he did this to himself and to other people in the market... It has to collapse. As long as investors are able to take their money off of the exchange, he also mentioned something. I don't think I have it in this video. That everyone who who you know who has money and doesn't is, isn't able to get their money, they will be able to get it back. You know, he's working on it right now. He said he was talking to other people behind the scenes to clarify, just to make sure that people can eventually get their money. It won't be like a Mount Gox situation where some things simply disappear. You know, in 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 total, there will be some kind of things afterward, but. No, why? What's up with people trying to save these failing exchanges? Like, no one's going to trust it again. No one's going to be like, actually, I think I might use Mount Gox again. It, it's, it has a nice ring to it. I'm, you know, no, like just, and, 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 and also this like skirting on the edges of things in the cryptocurrency space. People being so reluctant to actually use the crypto exchanges that like hold all their coins in cold wallets or like actually tell people how much money they have on the exchange or what they're doing or actually regulated. I don't know exactly what it is with people uh, making sure maybe it makes them feel cooler. I don't know. Did you feel cool for having your money on FTX because it only had three letters as opposed to an entire name like Coinbase? I can't really decide exactly what's going on within this space anymore. So apparently they're going to be bankrupt. That's just completely logical. That's what happens when you lie to a whole bunch of people. So they're trying to get money now and I can, I know someone's working behind the scenes to try and 
get them money in some sort of weird way. They're going to try and relaunch FTX in like a year and a half and no one's going to be there for it. And then, they're you know, we're just never going to hear about it again. Also in the, oh, not us. No, we also have money, I promise. Uh, Tether and a bunch of other companies, Tether was the largest one to actually make the news, uh, has come forward to talk about exactly how much money they have, all the things, you know, where the money's allocated, where money's going, yada, yada, yada. It says 82% of Tether reserves are held in extremely liquid assets, according to the attestation. Uh, part of the news is that in 2017, a lot of people began to believe that the idea of a stable coin was kind of weird and really abstract for the cryptocurrency space. Tether appeared in essence around 2016, gained popularity in 2017, and basically began to tell people that they had a really easy way to not cash out of the cryptocurrency market, but be able to swap their money into something that mimicked the US dollar in a digital form. At the end of 2017, 2018, people began to wonder exactly where this money was coming from. So people began, I'm talking very fast, I'm sorry. People began to ask uh, where Tether got this money from, and Tether began to say, Multiple times, we got this money from the money that we have other places. We have cash reserves. We have a number of other uh, big, rich people who are making sure that we have enough money for this coin to be created. A lot of people didn't believe them. So now they've gone through multiple years of having to do audits and showing people how much money they do have or don't have. The original idea was that Tether had all of their money in US dollars. I don't know who started that rumor. That's the dumbest thing in the entire world. There is no investor on the planet who has billions of dollars, who has all of their money just wrapped into US dollars. Nonetheless, the idea that you would think that every tether is literally backed by one physical paper US dollar or that they have a bank account with nearly 70 billion US dollars inside of it doesn't make any sense. So years ago, they began to say that they had diamonds and rubies and jewels and real estate and bonds and all these other things and a lot of other uh, forms of money held in other places around the world. So recently, after this entire FTX thing, a lot of other companies are coming forward and being like, not us, over here, we are still liquid. And Tether just happens to be uh, one of the largest ones who came forward. They even released like a blog post. Tether proves resilience of reserves in latest attestation. I guess this is before, I think it's supposed to be next Monday or Tuesday. Um, all the crypto exchanges, at least all the big ones, uh, have announced that they are going to be um, showing proof of reserves, showing exactly how much they have, how much is on the books, how much they have in cold storage and hot storage to prove to everyone that they actually have all these coins that, that should have been done before. I don't know that wasn't a, why people, you know, why wasn't that a thing? Even just a couple of years ago, the entire idea of Bitcoin is that you can always prove how much Bitcoin there is. You cannot come up to me and say, hey, bro, I got 25 Bitcoin, because if you can't show it to me on a blockchain, it's clearly not yours. Same exact way with banks. Banks can banks can literally say that they have $30 million, even though they only have a million dollars because of rehypothecation. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, the point is, yeah, Tether announced it and a whole bunch of other crypto exchanges are saying that they're going to be doing the exact same thing. Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire says stablecoin issuer is not affected by troubles at crypto exchange FTX. Everyone is distancing themselves as much as inhumanely popular. I mean, making sure that everyone knows that they worked with them. They're not working with them anymore. If they had any FTT tokens, all those coins have been sold off. They are not financially compromised in any sort of way. This will be happening for the next couple of days until people eventually forget that FTX even happened. I give it like near Christmas. I don't think anyone's going to even remember exactly what's going on with FTX anymore or even really care because something else new and dramatical will have come out because the cryptocurrency space is nonsensical nearly every single day. So um, that does it for the portion of, hey, look over here. We definitely aren't going broke like FTX. Yeah, we were working with them before and we had a bunch of their money, but now we sold all of it and look how great that we're doing news. Oh, don't forget that, you know, the stock market's up. So that's, you know, S silver lining and all that kind of stuff also in the news and people need to stop like if you are going to say something online like at least give like five sources like at least i mean like bare bare minimum so the news is there was a rumor spread by he <laughs> one person like always this one person announced that el salvador apparently had all of their bitcoin on ftx can anyone tell me if that was true or not Anybody? No, of of course it freaking wasn't true. And the guy who started the rumor was like, oh, oh my gosh, no. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I can't believe it. So the news was that a whole bunch of other companies began to start pointing fingers at other companies saying online and on basically on Twitter because Twitter is, you know, the, the hot mess of the internet. 
announcing that they believed that other companies and other institutions had their money locked up into FTX. At some point, where's this guy? Right here, Mike Novogratz came out and was like, oh, I guys, I heard that uh, Bukele and all these other people have their money in uh, FTX and now El Salvador won't be able to get their money out. And the people fact-checked it really quick. I think the president came out and was like, nope, dude, we got all of our money. And then Chang Peng Cao, because, you know, he has to chime in for everything, came out and was like, no, they definitely have their money. I looked into their wallets. It's all there. And Mike Novogratz tweeted, apologies to Nayib Bukele and the people of El Salvador because I never checked my facts. I, fe I fell for fake news, and while I mentioned I hadn't confirmed it, I should have. Thanks to Chang Peng Cao for pointing it out. I'm a huge fan of what you're doing in El Salvador. Like, go sit somewhere. It's this guy. What's the other one? The other really rich guy. Oh, my gosh. He always has a suntan, even though he's always inside the house. I don't remember his name. The other really rich guy. It's Novogratz and, like, two other people who are always in the cryptocurrency news. Everything they say is incorrect. Every single price prediction they've ever had has never come true. Everything they said was going to happen for Bitcoin or to Bitcoin never happened. They just simply got into this space really early and actually have tons of cryptocurrency. So this is kind of their uh, claim to fame. I'm richer than you are. I have more cryptocurrencies than you will ever have. And therefore, I can have a say in every single thing that's happening within the cryptocurrency space. So this also caused people to panic. Yeah, imagine that, right? Spreading false rumors online for things that could have been held internally. Like, imagine if this guy, I'm pretty sure he has his number. Imagine if he had messaged Chang Peng Tao or even the, you know, the president of El Salvador was like, hey, bro, you guys all right? You... You guys going broke or you're not? OK, I was about to post on Twitter, so I'm just making sure, you know, why post something like that? You want attention. You want other people to think that you're an insider in some sort of way that you knew information before everybody else. But you did not Guess what? Because you never do over and over. Stop spreading rumors in the space. What's wrong with all these rich people who keep just saying random things online, thinking that everyone should listen to every single word that they have to say, and then they end up crashing the market over and over? It happens so often. It's freaking ridiculous. I had to stop myself from cursing there. So that was really popular news as well. People thought for a couple of hours that uh, El Salvador was actually El Broco and that they had no more cryptocurrencies because all of it was an FTX. Guess what? It was a complete lie. The guy didn't check his facts. And apparently El Salvador is still doing fine. There was an article. I won't say all of it. But basically it says something along the lines of like, nope, El Salvador still has it because I think the president bought some Bitcoin while he was... On the John, I can't say the other word. If you know what a John is, you know, congratulations. And it's like, why did we need to know that in the article? Why was that a thing? Anyway, that's the, yep, they still got their Bitcoin news. I'm, I'm glad. That's wonderful for the people of that country. Fantastic. Also, and hey, I'm rich over here. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I, I knew stuff before everyone else did. It says financial group CEO claims he tried, yes, yeah, sure, claims he tried to warn Bankman Freed about insolvency in July. Yep, you guessed it. So not only are rich people not content with constantly telling us exactly where crypto prices are going to go and always being wrong and telling us exactly how high or how low Bitcoin is going to go or how much lower Bitcoin has to go before prices end up moving back up or exactly what's going to happen with regulation over the next couple of years. But you guessed it. A whole bunch of rich people are coming out of the woodworks to tell us that they definitely saw all the red flags, all the signs that something was terrible. And they tried to warn us. They, they, they saw everything that was going wrong before. But how funny that they never mentioned any of it. No one was told anything. Wouldn't that have made sense if you realized that this exchange was insolvent in July, August, September, October, November? Wow, that's a long time to have all this information for yourself and not tell all the other investors. But alas, here we are. His name is Richard Handler. Alleged he offered restructuring services to FTX that might have saved it. But the exchange reps refused to meet with him because I'm pretty sure the conversation never happened. You can say anything. I spoke with Beyonce last Tuesday before she released her new album and I was hanging out with her in the park. You don't believe me? Well, you weren't there. You don't know. I could. She could be right. Beyonce could be sitting right next to me right now. And you would never know it. Wouldn't that be weird? Wouldn't that be really odd if I'm like screaming into this microphone, talking quickly and Beyonce sitting next to me just doing nothing? I find that hilarious. On top of that as well, and also look over here, I'm rich, I'm rich, Kraken's Jesse Powell has blasted the FTX CEO, saying that he saw all the red flags for a very long time, I'm sure, right, sure, so um, here's, here's a good one, if you find yourself, and this is a general, this is not to, to Jesse Powell, 
It's just for everyone listening and all of your friends who might be listening. If you find yourself in a position where you have ascertained from information that you have received that another cryptocurrency exchange is insolvent, can you let us know immediately as opposed to months down the line before we have another cryptocurrency catastrophe? If you figure out that Coinbase is broke and they're lying and you can show proof of this, can can you tell us like the same week you have confirmed that news so we all know before and we don't have to wait months later for the collapse to happen for you to be like, oh, oh, woe is us. Oh my gosh, I totally knew it. I I saw. No, because you're just looking for a way to go on CNBC or ABC or 123 to try and tell people that you had some type of foresight when you didn't. Why does this keep happening all the time? Remember the other... T- oh my gosh, it happened. first of all, it happened multiple times this year and last year. Every single DeFi, Web3, 90210 thing that kept on popping up or disappearing over the course of this year. And every single time there was always a rich person going, listen, man, I, I looked into the DeFi platforms and they're, they're not secure. I don't know what's going on. It's like, oh, well, you, 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 you figured out that you could have saved 100,000 plus people from actually losing their money, but you... You didn't say a word, nothing. You just waited for the collapse to happen. Oh, that's cool. So there's a whole bunch of rich people. These are the these are the two most popular ones. I don't know. I've never even heard this guy's name before. Uh, Richard Handler uh, was the most popular one. He was even more popular than the guy from Kraken. Sure, why not? Talking about that he knew for a very long time. Do you think he knew? No, he didn't knew. That's the financial group CEO claims he tried to warn Bankman Freed about insolvency in July. I'm I'm certain of of that one because that's how time works, and yeah. Let's move on. Also in the news, and I and I thought this was news already, but apparently everyone's loving it, with the sole aim of broadening its reach into the financial business. That's not true. Twitter's going broke. Twitter recently registered with the U.S. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or FinCEN to become a payment processor, according to a release by the New York Times on the 9th of November. The registration enables the platform to get various ways to process its payments. The billionaire, I guess they mean Muskie, foresees users linking their online accounts to their social media handles, as well as the company transforming, what? Into debit cards, checks, and whatnot. First of all, it's not the 1980s. No one uses checks. Really weird if you didn't know this and you're in the States. No one else uses checks but you. I know it's weird, right? When you leave the States, you figure out that checks aren't a thing anywhere else and people stop using them in the late 80s and early 90s. It's the weirdest thing in the entire world. Remember I told you that before? Like I I, I couldn't get a, a, a check cashed or put it into my bank account because the woman was like, sir, it, it's, it's not the 1920s. We don't use those anymore. The registering entity, dubbed Twitter Payments LLC, Limited Liability Company, was formed in August in Washington State. In August? Sure. Meanwhile, the registration will help businesses carry out money transfers, exchange currencies, or checks. No one's... If you give... I swear to actual goodness. If anyone out there gives their financial information to Twitter, you're looking to lose it. You know how many... Think of the amount of times that we've heard that other people's Twitter accounts have been compromised or stolen or someone has said something. You think that is only limited to people being able to tweet on your account? Why would why would anyone want to? I, I, I don't understand. Anyway, so what I assume that this actually is, and, and this is why I assume the, the and what not uh, point actually is, there's been a lot of rumors, at least for two weeks, that Elon Musk is looking to integrate cryptocurrencies or something into this space or into Twitter in some sort of way. You have to have other forms of revenue. You can't just simply keep on relying on advertisement because a whole bunch of advertisers have left Twitter. We went over that a couple of days ago. You don't believe me? You can look it up yourself. I'm not lying. Uh, the other part is you can't do this instantaneously like a lot of other people thought. Remember a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, when Dogecoin was pumping and everyone's like, yeah, here we go. Dogecoin is going to be on Twitter. That's not how it works. Twitter would have been shut down immediately because of anti-money laundering KYC laws. Like you, it just, It's just not how it's going to happen. So I think at some point, crypto will probably more than likely be integrated into like heavily integrated into Twitter. Like it is like a core function of the platform. But you need to register with all of these, uh, you know, police, essentially, 
before you can really get things going. Then on top of that, once again, this is the thing that's really going to be a a game changer for everyone out there. You're going to have to give all your personal information to Twitter. They're essentially going to have the same documentation that a bank would have. So not only will they have your ID, they're going to have to have your passport number and your address and probably your social and a whole bunch of, I mean, depends on how much money you're moving back and forth. Like you will not be able to live in this utopian world where you're able to buy up a million Dogecoin, put it onto Twitter and begin transacting in it and then shifting that money to somewhere else and you do so and so and so for years and years to come. This won't be a decentralized platform. He may be the sole owner and chief ABC CEO, but that's not how real money works. I wish that people in crypto knew that because it's kind of embarrassing that we are a very large uh, near economic powerhouse around the world, but people still don't know that regulation is a thing. So yeah, a lot of people were very excited about this. The speculation is abound. Will Dogecoin get added to Twitter? Probably. I assume Elon Musk owns several billion Dogecoin. I don't see any other reason why he would have chosen this coin in particular, unless he owns a huge stake in it. It's, it's about money. Never forget that. It's always, if you are confused about something in the world, tell your, just, you know, it's, it's always about money. If you're confused about policies or why this government's doing this or how they could, it's always money. You either trying to get some or you don't have enough. That's how life works. That's the Twitter has registered with FinCEN. Wow. Oh, that's going to be, going to be interesting. Yeah. Let's move on. Also in the, oh my gosh, no, we have to do something. This is absolutely terrible news. California has announced they are going to be investigating the failure of crypto exchange FTX. Uh, they're trying to make it seem like they're the first ones to do this. Japan already said it. Singapore said it. I think South Korea was also mentioning, thinking about looking into it as well. Who else was there? The SEC already said that they're going to be looking into it. Oh my gosh. I wish I had that here. Gary Gensler, who's the head of the, the SEC, announced yesterday, it, I, I, I mean, you, you couldn't make this up if you tried. He announced that he was shocked and appalled by what happened at FTX and that the cryptocurrency space needs more regulation. Craziest part is that Kathy, no, no, not Kathy Woods. What's the other one? Oh, uh, gosh, the other, the, the, the other woman from uh, the SEC. Hester Pierce. I ah, look at me. I got it. Hester Pierce actually went on TV and was like, she said the same thing. She was like, it's an actual shame that this happened. But you know, she lives in the real world. And she was like, it's a shame that this happened because the SEC still has not given enough cryptocurrency regulation to stop things like this from happening. So once again, in the gigantic saga of the SEC keeps saying we need crypto regulation to really get the, you know, the whole space in shape but also in that they have no actual apparent desire to give any kind of, because Hester Pierce would have done so before. She's the only person from the SEC who came forward and was like, yeah, they should have multiple Bitcoin ETFs by now. But Gary Gensler is just a Grinch. Anyway, so yeah, a whole bunch of regulators are like, oh, we need to do something, blah, 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 blah. But they'll stop talking about it in like two or three weeks because these people don't actually care. You have to appear like you care about people and that's how you get elected. You have to say on a podium or on the news, we are trying to help people out. But once that news becomes old, you move on to the next news. And that's the, that's the new thing that you begin to scream loudly about and how you're trying to save the people. So yeah, California is going to be uh, investigating crypto exchange FTX. You mean to tell me no one knew this? No one knew anything? No one looked at any? All right. Let's move on. Also in the news, I'm not sure how this was news. I, I I logically can't figure out how this made it into the news. It says Ethereum's burn rate has overtaken that of its minting rate. Right. The second largest cryptocurrency, Ethereum, which recently switched from proof of work to proof of stake, has found its ground for the first time since its upgrade. That's a lie. Then people are, so everyone on Twitter keeps calling it ultrasound money, and I, it's really cringy. Please stop it. I don't know why everyone's doing that has suggested that Ethereum's annual inflation rate has plunged, which states that the network's Ether burning rate has surpassed the minting rate, meaning that Ethereum is deflationary. But we, we knew that weeks ago. We, we had that news. Remember the news where I was like, hey, guys, Ethereum should be like 10x. And somebody was like, why? I couldn't hear you saying why, but I still knew that you said why. And I was like, because if we still had proof of work, we would have minted around 500,000 Ether, but we've only created... 
3,000. And somebody was like, whoa, that's crazy. Ether should be a lot higher. So now the news now is if we had proof of work, we would have created. Here's these, these, these numbers are insane. I don't understand how Ether is only $1,200. Like I'm not mathematic. Like my brain is leaking out of my ear because I'm not really understanding how this is making sense. If we still had proof of work, we would have had 670,000 Ether. With proof of stake, we have under 6,000. It is 5,598. If we still had proof of work, Ethereum's price would probably still be exactly the same. With 670,000 new coins issued. So anyway, this was really popular news. This kept on, I mean, this was everywhere. It says, Ether turns deflationary as amount of ETH burn spikes amid FTX-induced market volatility. No, it happened before. It was it was already, defla like, this happened weeks ago. Like, we, we knew about this already. Like, that was, it was also major news because it was, because it was major news because e Ethereum said that they were going to turn deflationary and then they did. So that's, that's what happened. I don't know why this reappeared in the news and everyone's talking about it. Everyone's like, yeah, we did it. And every everyone keeps, it's, it's so weird. Everyone is only referring to Ether as ultrasound money now on Twitter. And I'm like, please stop. Just call it Ether. Like, it's very culty and weird for you to keep changing words and stuff like that. Just call it, just call it what it is. So we knew that it was deflationary. It's been deflationary for a while now. Like, like see this pretty chart with like the line going, wee, and it went under. Um, and also... Why are we still so low in price? I'm not understanding. And I know there's one person out there that was like, because the coin's crap. So so Solana. So is Litecoin or any other coin you hold. Because I'm tired of people telling me that the actual good coins that are being used are the crappy ones. When your when you're coin network database, it's a database, uh, fell apart 10 times this year. That's the Ethereum news. Wow, I can't believe it's, fi it's finally deflationary. I mean... Good thing we're just hearing about this today and not weeks ago. News. Like what? Ether supply has turned negative for the first time since the merge. Are Am I in a different time zone? Am, am I missing something that everyone else is? What year is it? Can you please tell me what year it is? Maybe, maybe I'm... Am I in the future? What? Anyway, that's the Ether news. And also in... I've... I rolled my eyes so hard, they went to the back of my head news. <sighs> people from Ripple have uh, started offering people from FTX jobs. I would like to believe that this was done in like purely good faith. In like, hey bro, that's crazy. I can't believe you're going broke. You want a job? But I assume it has to do with every other person trying to be in the news uh, just wanting to like um, profit off of the demise of FTX to be like, look how great Ripple is. They hired all those people when the company went to crap. So um, cool that they're looking to hire people from FTX uh, too. This was done for publicity. But I mean, once again, if you can't figure out what's going on, it's always about money. So, you know, like remember before, anyway, doesn't matter. That's the Ripple news. I told you the news was going to be nonsensical. I've been telling you for the entirety of this week. Every single thing, this entire thing, all of this could have been avoided if Changpeng Cao had never tweeted that thing. I'm telling you. That's the Ripple executives made an unexpected offer. Wow. Two FTX employees. I didn't see that one coming. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, you know, just... All right, let's move on. Right, uh, as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters, Martin Stoyer, Bodie McBoatface, Dotha Diddy, Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, and let's move on, Empire Queen, Oman Gabe, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony, Ambroski, the... Dealer's dead. There we go. Captain Something in the Z-Way. Lay, Mobarazzi, VB Nerd 21, Laura DeSilva, Corded, Biddy, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Pat Trenoso, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman, High XRP, Nostromo, John Stars, and the Animal, Rita, Bibliophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam, Grace, like, Wise Night Owl. Okay. 242 to the World, Bangor Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Setsuna, Paxis, Beyonce, stop. 
Nick Manji Alavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, minting coins. Yes, the crypto. Yeah, I would love some tea. Anytime Fitness Monks Corner staff. But she's she's really nice. Bake me a cake. Tigero Macho Nisa and on crypto with Lionel. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, has subscribed at the moment. Sorry for screaming. Bitcoin is currently at 2.3%, down by 2.3%. It's at 17,175. It was like just up. Like it was literally just in the green. I assume something stock markety has happened or Sam Bankman Freed is getting a pedicure or something like that. Something's in the news. Ethereum's down by 1%. Binance Coin is down by 2 Like everything was, I mean, telling you, like just up. It was literally just in the green. But alas, here we are. Solana's up by four, so you know, there's witchcraft afoot. Litecoin's up by four, Uniswap is up by two, Lunasetium Leolo is up by four percent as well. Chillas is up by seven percent. Um, X Chain, wow, is up by 17%, but it also has $41 million of trading volume. If you have $41 million, guess what you can do to the coin's price? Yeah. Well, it was green a second ago. Let's see where the weekend takes us. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, subscribing, watching, or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.